Hello everyone, welcome to We Read Traveling with Jesus. Today, September 24, 2021, we enter the 24th day of the National Holy Bible Month with a theme of Jesus as a friend in our journey of life, which is the exact same theme of this channel. And we would also like to thank everyone who has supported We Read Traveling with Jesus. Today, Yulita from Jibaran, Bali, will read a book from Catholic Liturgical Calendar, and Eka Mayo from Jakarta will read a singing story. For formation teaching, it's about love and honor read by Lara Kirk from the OJCC Canberra, Australia. After formation teaching part, let's we pray together with Pope Francis, the recovery of the world from the COVID-19 virus. Happy listening. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to We Read Traveling with Jesus channel, a channel of holy gospel readings available in three languages, Indonesia, English, and Italian. Now you can access the reading in Indonesia and English separately every day and the readings in Italian available only on Sunday. We hope you enjoy it. St. John Henry Newman John Henry Newman, the 19th century's most important English-speaking Catholic theologian, spent the first half of his life as an Anglican and the second half as a Roman Catholic. He was a priest, popular preacher, writer, and eminent theologian in both churches. Born in London, England, he studied at Oxford's Trinity College, was a tutor at Oriel College, and for 17 years was a vicar of the University Church, St. Mary the Virgin. He eventually published eight volumes of parochial and plain sermons as well as two novels. His poem, Dream of Geronius, was set to music by Sir Edward Elger. After 1833, Newman was a prominent member of the Oxford movement, which emphasized the church debt to the church fathers and challenged any tendency to consider truth as completely subjective. Historical research made Newman suspect that the Roman Catholic Church was in close continuity with the church that Jesus established. In 1845, he was received into full communion as a Catholic. Two years later, he was ordained a Catholic priest in Rome and joined the congregation of the Oratory, founded three centuries earlier by St. Philip Neri. Returning to England, Newman founded Oratory houses in Birmingham and London and for seven years served as a rector of the Catholic University of Ireland. Before Newman, Catholic theology tended to ignore history, preferring instead to draw deduction from first principles, much as plain geometry does. After Newman, the lived experience of believer was recognized as a key part of theological reflection. Newman eventually wrote 40 books and 21,000 letters that survive. Most famous are his book-length essay on the development of Christian doctrine, on consulting the faithful in matters of doctrine, Apologia Profita Sua, his spiritual autobiography up to 1864, an essay on the grammar of ascent. He accepted Vatican first teaching on papal infallibility while noting its limits which many people who favored that definition were reluctant to do. When Newman was named a cardinal in 1879, he took as his motto, Cor ad cor locutur, heart speaks to heart. 
He was buried in Rednal 11 years later. After his grave was exhumed in 2008, a new tomb was prepared at the Oratory Church in Birmingham. Three years later, after Newman died, a Newman Club for Catholic Students began at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. In time, his name was linked to ministry centers at many public and private colleges and universities in the United States. In 2010, Pope Benedict XVI beatified Newman in London. Benedict noted Newman's emphasis on the vital place of revealed religion in civilized society, but also praised his pastoral zeal for the sick, the poor, the bereaved, and those in prison. Pope Francis canonized Newman in October 2019. St. John Henry Newman's liturgical feast is celebrated on October 9th. Reflection John Henry Newman has been called the absent father of Vatican II. Because his writings on conscience, religious liberty, scripture, the vocation of lay people, the relation of church and state, and other topics were extremely influential in the shaping of the council's document. Although Newman was not always understood or appreciated, he steadfastly preached the good news by word and example. The story is taken from franciscanmedia.org. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Holy Spirit, beloved of my soul, I adore you. Enlighten me, guide me, console me, tell me what I should do. Give me your orders. I submit myself to all that you desire of me, and to accept all that you permit to happen to me. Let me only know your will. Amen. Daily Readings September 24, 2021 Friday of the 25th week in Ordinary Time First Reading Reading from the Prophetic Book of Haggai in the second year of King Darius, on the twenty-first day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Tell this to the governor of Judah, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and to the high priest Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, and to the remnant of the people. Who is left among you that saw this house in its former glory? And how do you see it now? Does it now seem like nothing in your eyes? But now take care courage, Zerubbabel says the Lord, and take courage, Joshua, high priest, son of Jehoshadak, and take courage, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work. For I am with you, says the Lord of hosts, this is the pact that I made with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit continues in your midst. Do not fear, for thus says the Lord of hosts, One moment yet, a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations and the treasures of all the nation will come in, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Mine is the silver, and mine the gold, says the Lord of hosts. Greater will be the future glory of this house than the former, says the Lord of hosts. 
and in this place I will give you peace, says the Lord of hosts, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsible Psalm Hope in God, I will praise Him, my Savior and my God. Do me justice, O God, and fight my fight against a faithless people. From the deceitful and impious man rescue me. Responsible Psalm Hope in God, I will praise Him, my Savior and my God. For you, O God, are my strength. Why do you keep me so far away? Why must I go about in mourning with the enemy oppressing me? Responsible Psalm Hope in God, I will praise Him, my Savior and my God. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to the dwelling place. Responsible Psalm Hope in God, I will praise Him, my Savior and my God. Then will I go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. Responsible Psalm Hope in God, I will praise Him, my Savior and my God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. Alleluia, Alleluia. Gospel, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Once, when Jesus was praying in solitude, and disciples were with him, he asked them, Who do you the crowd say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others, Elijah. Still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. Then he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said in reply, The Christ of God. He rebuked them and directed them not to tell this to anyone. He said, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Official Weary Traveling with Jesus is collaborating with International Community of BOGCC located in Canberra, Australia to include the formation teaching into the reading. The formation teaching is taken from Catholic Catechism that may inspire you and strengthen you in your daily life. Also serve as a continuous reflection that may deepen our understanding on reading and also the Holy Gospel. Hi everybody, today we're going to speak about love and honour, the call to love and honour one another in community. Okay, so I'm going to start with one that's really important in community, which is the way we think and speak about others, because probably most of us in community are not going to be struggling with stealing from or killing or um, damaging our brothers and sisters in community in a physical way. But there is a real temptation when we're living close in close proximity, getting to know each other very well, that we can sin against each other in the way we think and particularly in the way we speak. So I'm going to get straight into that. Um, so I'm, I'm drawing here from the catechism. So catechism, well, you'll probably see it come up, but anyway, 2479 is the, is the paragraph. Every person enjoys a natural right to the honour of his name and reputation and to respect. Honour is the social witness given to human dignity. 
So every person is born with a natural right. You don't earn the right to be respected and honoured and to have your reputation cared for. You don't have to earn that right. Everyone's born with that right. And the way we witness to the dignity of each human being is by upholding their honour, upholding their good name, their good reputation. And so um, in paragraph 2477, there's three ways that we can sin against the honour of another person, which is their birthright. So one is by making rash judgments against them, by tacitly assuming as true a moral fault in our neighbour without really sufficient foundation. So we just suspect bad motives from that person and we judge them according to what we suspect is motivating them. And let's face it, husbands and wives do that pretty regularly. Siblings do that. People in household together who are getting cranky with each other can fall into, oh, I know what you're about. I know what's going on there. Uh, you're like this. You're thinking that. So making um, rash judgments. And we actually don't have a right to do that. We don't have a right to decide what another person's motivation is. We can say, hey, when you do that, that really affects me negatively. But we can't go that step further and say, you do that because you think you're better than me. That's taking a godlike position and we're making a judgment that uh, of another person's um, character and motivations that we actually don't have a right to make. Prayer to Mother Mary for the end of the pandemic. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God, in the present tragic situation. When the whole world is prey to suffering and anxiety, we fly to you, Mother of God, and our Mother, and seek refuge under your protection. Virgin Mary, turn your merciful eyes towards us amid this coronavirus pandemic. Comfort those who are distraught and mourn their loved ones who have died and at times are buried in a way that grieves them deeply. Be close to those who are concerned for their loved ones who are sick and who in order to prevent the spread of the disease cannot be close to them. Fill with hope those who are troubled by the uncertainty of the future and the consequences for the economy and employment. Mother of God and our Mother, pray for us to God, the Father of mercies, that this great suffering may end, and that hope and peace may done anew. Plead with your Divine Son, as you did at Cana, so that the families of the sea and the victims be comforted and their hearts be open to confidence and trust. In the present tragic situation, when the whole world is prey to suffering and anxiety, we fly to you, Mother of God and our Mother, and seek refuge under your protection. Protect those doctors, nurses, health workers, and volunteers who are on the front line of this emergency and are risking their lives to save others. Support their heroic effort and grant them strength, generosity, and continued health. Be close to those who assist the sick night and day, and to priests 
who in their pastoral concern and fidelity to the gospel are trying to help and support everyone. Blessed Virgin, illumine the minds of men and women engaged in scientific research that they may find effective solution to overcome this virus. Support national leaders that with wisdom, solicitude, and generosity, they may come to the aid of those lacking the basic necessities of life and may devise social and economic solutions inspired by far-sightedness and solidarity. Virgin Mary, turn your merciful eyes towards us amid this coronavirus pandemic. Comfort those who are distraught and mourn their loved ones who have died. Mary, most holy, stir our consciences so that the enormous funds invested in developing and stockpiling arms will instead be spent on promoting effective research on how to prevent similar tragedies from occurring in the future. Beloved Mother, help us realize that we are all members of one great family and to recognize the bond that unites us so that in a spirit of fraternity and solidarity we can help to alleviate countless situations of poverty and need make us strong in faith persevering in service constant in prayer mary consolations of the afflicted embrace all your children in distress and pray that god will stretch out his all powerful hand and free us from this terrible pandemic so that life can serenely resume its normal course to you who shine on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope do with and trust ourselves O clement O loving O sweet virgin mary amen may through the sacrifice of jesus on the cross and the prayers of our lady we will all be freed from the curse filled with joy love and receive the blessings of abraham which got blessed in all things exaltation healed the ability to endure suffering and still bear fruit prosperity victory humility and favor of god amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the lord be with you and with your spirit may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen go in peace glorifying the lord by your life thanks be to god if you have an adventure with jesus please send to our team your audio video or lettering on email we are with traveling with jesus at gmail.com thank you dear brothers and sisters those are the readings for today we hope you enjoy it and see you again tomorrow from we are traveling with jesus goodbye